people shopping, and you're like, hello, rich people! <laughs> Don't touch me, I'm dirty! <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> All right. Okay, so uh, put your hands together for your first storyteller of the second half, Tina Perlman! <laughs> So, um, I, I put my four-month-old daughter in the car, and uh, she's easy because uh, she can't, you know, fight me off because she's four months. Um, but now I have to put my little boy in the car, and he doesn't listen to me because he's two, and that's his role. Um, so, you know, I just stand there, and, and this has been going on for four months because he's very jealous of his sister. He's been giving me a very hard time, and I just stand there, Benjamin, come over here. Benjamin, come over here. Benjamin, come over here. Benjamin, come over here. And then I get angry, and I say, get over here now! Now, I know that a lot of you people are looking at me and thinking, you know, bad, bad parenting, um, headed Nussbaum, uh, Brittany, certainly, and that's fine. I encourage you to judge me because, no, please judge me. I came to the moth to be judged. Uh, feel free. Um, but let me say this in my defense. I am home with two children under three, and that is very hard. Now, I, okay, so the boy, so I finally, I corral him, and I get him in the car, but he's, he's a fast little guy, and, and he, he, <laughs> He eludes me, and I, I, can't, I can't get him in the car seat, and he, he darts, he's like a little monkey, and he shoots right up to the driver's seat, and he wants to sit in the driver's seat. Now, let me just let you know at this point in the story, the car does not go anywhere. The story does not have a tragic ending. He, he doesn't drive, or the car doesn't move. The emergency brake is on. I have the key. But he, I know what he wants to do. He wants to sit in the front seat, and he wants to, you know, pretend roomy vroom, and he wants to play with the hazards and fuck around with the lights and all that stuff. I get it. I understand. And uh, it's fine, because I haven't slept in, like, six months, and I kind of feel like this will kill three minutes. So, because when you're home, when you're home with two children under three, and I'm not saying that there isn't a tremendous amount of love and joy and, you know, laughter and smiling and wonderful times, but there is horror. And to kill, to kill three, three whole minutes is, is like a beautiful thing. So, all right, so I let him do that, and I'm just kind of standing, you know, hanging on the door there for a while, and then somehow I, like, roll over to the hood of the car. And uh, I, I just want to let you know, like, I, when you stay home, you, you look like shit all the time because you're home. You know what I mean? Like, where are you going to go, you know? You're not going to, you know, get all gussied up to go to shop, right? You, you look like shit all the time, and, you know, I haven't washed my hair in, like, a week, and, like, here I have very bad unibrow, you know, like, Bert here, and uh, Saddam here, and uh, you don't want to know what's going on, you know, here. And I, I'm, and uh, I, now... I'm laying on my back on the hood, and uh, oh, and I'm, I wear that terrible ski cap that I knit, and, and I wear it as like a punishment, like you knit it and it's ugly, so you have to wear it. And uh, I wear this long down coat that's like a big quilt with a zipper, and I wear clogs, you know, because I can slip them on. And I just lay on the, on the hood of the car, and I start to run, like I start to massage my scalp. And you know when your hair's dirty, and you, you have your smell, like your human kind of, and I, I'm so disgusting, and I figured this is a good time to resume the conversation that I've had with myself and with a phalanx of mental health professionals over 20 years, which is, why Sarah Silverman? Um, you know, why her? Why? Because, because you know, for, for 20 years or so, I've been trying to make it in show business, and I could never quite, and I, you know, I always ask myself, like, why, you know, why not me? We started around the same time, and why did she get all the opportunity, and I was in a cycle of failure, and temping, and sweating, and starving, and true horror, and uh, why her? And I start to think about her life, you know, and, L.A., which I don't care what anybody in this room says, it's infinitely better, and, and, uh, sorry, it just is, and, uh, 
I am thinking about how she, you know, puts on gowns to go, host award ceremonies, and, well, who cares about that? She showers, you know, she can do that. And I'm home, you know, eating substandard food like goldfish and drinking juice boxes, and... All right, so I work this all out in my head, and now I go back to the car, and uh, I say, okay, Benjamin, you know, now it's time to get back in your car seat, and I, somehow I, like, get him out, I put him in his car seat, and I start to drive. Now we're going to go to ShopRite. And uh, I see that uh, the boy has put pennies in the CD player. <laughs> so I pull over, and, and I'm trying to get them out. And as I'm trying to get them out, I'm pushing them further into the CD player. And I turn to him, and I say, Benjamin, you've broken the CD player. You've put pennies in the CD player. And he says, Elmo. And... <laughs> And, and now uh, it is not working. The radio is not working. Let me explain. When you stay home with two children under three, the only respite that you get from the horror is to occasionally you get to go in the car and take a 10-minute drive to ShopRite and listen to some music. It's, it's shitty music. Is this is a song, this is a song, Elmo's song. But it's music, and it, it takes you away. And Elmo's, you know, he, he's musical. So, um, so I, I live like this for 12 weeks with, with, no, with no CD player and no radio. And one day it dawns on me to take the car to the Subaru dealership. I have a Subaru. It's a fairly new Subaru. And I pull into the dealership right at the auto body area. And the, this man comes out. And his name is George. And he's like an angel. And he walks over to the car. And he, see, like, he, looks, he, he, he locks eyes with me. And he sees, you know, Bert and Saddam. <laughs> And he totally gets that, like, I'm home with two kids, and he sees the pain, and uh, he says to me, you know, what can I do you for? And I, I look him in the face, I say, I don't know what happened, but one day, my CD player radio just stopped working. I don't know how that, how could that have happened? Isn't that crazy? And he's like, yeah, you know, uh, your car's totally under warranty. I can fix it up for you for nothing in 20 minutes. And he does. And uh, we, we get back in the car, and we listen to Elmo, and we go home. Thank you. <laughs>